In this screencast, we will learn how to determine chemical formulas from percent composition, which is what we learned in the previous screencast. There are two types of formulas that we can have, empirical and molecular. The empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of atoms the element in a compound can have. So one example is BH3. Um, the molecular formula, on the other hand, is the whole number multiple of the empirical formula. It could be the same as the empirical formula, or it can be um, where the subscripts are multiplied by a common factor. So for example, B2H6. Another example of this would be carbohydrates. Um, you may remember from chemistry, glucose is C6H12O6. Okay, so that would be the molecular formula. That's the actual formula of glucose, or the empirical formula would be CH2O because the 6, the 12, and the 6 can all be divided by a common factor. That's 6, and so our lowest whole number ratio for a carbohydrate glucose is CH2O. That's the empirical formula. When you're determining empirical formulas, you want to follow these five steps. First, convert the percent to grams, and then convert the grams to moles using molar mass. Once you have your answers, you will divide each of these answers by the lowest number of mole, and then round it either to the nearest whole number or to the nearest half. You're going to make a whole number ratio and then write as a formula. Let's look at an example. For example, let's determine the empirical formula for a compound that is 80% carbon and 20% hydrogen. Percents are based out of 100, so I'm going to assume that I have 100 grams of my compound, so 80% of 100 is 80 grams of carbon, and 20% of 100 is 20 grams of hydrogen. So we're going to start with those amounts for our elements. If I have 80 grams of carbon, to find the number of moles of carbon, I'm going to divide my 80 grams of carbon by the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12 grams. 80 divided by 12 gives me 6.67 moles of carbon. I'm also going to start with my 20 grams of hydrogen. And again, I'm going to divide it by my atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1 gram. So 20 divided by 1 is 20 moles of hydrogen. I want to look at my two answers, 6.67 and 20. Whichever answer is the smallest, I want to divide both numbers by that amount. So I'm going to divide both by 6.67. And when I do that, I get 1 for carbon. And when I divide 20 by 6.67, I get 2.99. Now remember, we need to have whole numbers, so I'm going to round my 2.99 to 3. The only place where you want to do any rounding is at this final step. Okay, you do not want to round here at the mole step. Rounding too early will give you the wrong ratio. In fact, you want to make sure that when you find your number of moles that you have at least two or three decimal places. So the only place you round is after you divide to make either a whole number or to make a half number. So what do these numbers mean? Well, this tells me that I have one carbon and three hydrogens. So my formula will be C1H3. Since I don't write ones, my formula is actually CH3. Here is another example problem. What is the empirical formula of a compound with 25.9% nitrogen and 74.1% oxygen? Like before, we're assuming that we have 100 grams of our compound, so our percentages become our mass. So for nitrogen, I start with 25.9 grams of nitrogen. And to convert that to moles, I'm going to divide it by the atomic mass of nitrogen, which is 14 grams. 25.9 divided by 14 gives me 1.85 moles of nitrogen. I do the same steps for oxygen. So I take my 74.1 grams of oxygen, and I'm going to divide it by the atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16 grams. 74.1 divided by 16 is 4.63 moles of oxygen. Now I need to determine which of these factors is my lowest number. I have 1.85 and 4.63. The smaller number is 1.85, so I'm going to divide both answers by that 1.85. And I get 1, and I get 2.5. I can't just round this 2.5 to 3. It's not close enough for my empirical formula. So I need to find some number that I can multiply 2.5 by to turn it into a whole number. If I multiply it by 2, I can get a whole number of 5.
But since I multiplied my oxygen by two, I'm also going to need to multiply my nitrogen by two. So one times two here will give me two. This means that for my empirical formula, I have two nitrogens and five oxygens. So my empirical formula is N2O5. The next layer is to determine the molecular formula based on your empirical formula. To do this, you just need to add three more steps. First, determine the molar mass of the empirical formula. Then divide the given molar mass by the empirical formula's molar mass. And then multiply the empirical formula by that whole number. Let's look at some examples. What is the molecular formula of a compound with a molar mass of 60 grams per mole and an empirical formula of CH4N? Now these problems have to give you the molar mass of the compound. So that's the 60.0 grams per mole. If they're being nice, they will also give you the empirical formula. But sometimes you will have to calculate this. This problem is being nice. It gives us the empirical formula. So our first step is to calculate the molar mass of the formula we're given. So in this case, we have one carbon. So I'm going to take one times the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12. It gives me four hydrogens. So I take four times the atomic mass of hydrogen, which is one, and it gives me one nitrogen. So I'm gonna take one times the atomic mass of nitrogen. And then finally, I'm going to add these numbers up. 12 plus four plus 14 gives me a total molar mass of 30. Next, I take the mass they give me in the problem, the 60, and I divide it by the mass that I just calculated, 30. 60 divided by 30 is 2. This tells me I need to multiply my empirical formula of CH4N by 2, and this will give me a molecular formula of C2H8N2. In this problem, we're told the compound has 50.7% carbon, 4.2% hydrogen, and 45.1% oxygen, and a molar mass of 142 grams. What is the formula? Because this problem does not provide us with the empirical formula, we have to start back with our very first set of instructions. So I assume I have 100 grams of the compound, and of that 100 grams, 50.7 grams is carbon, 4.2 grams is hydrogen, and 45.1 grams is oxygen. For carbon, I'm going to take my 50.7 grams, and I'm going to divide it by the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12 and that will give me 4.225 moles of carbon. For my 4.2 grams of hydrogen, I'm going to again divide that by my atomic mass for hydrogen, so I divide it by one, and I'm going to get 4.2 moles. And for oxygen, I'm going to take my 45.1 grams and I'm going to divide it by the atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16 grams. And I get a total of 2.819 moles of oxygen. Now I have to find my smallest answer, 4.225, 4.2, and 2.819. My smallest number is 2.819, so I'm going to divide each of my answers by that number. 4.225 divided by 2.819 gives me 1.5. 4.2 divided by 2.819 will give me 1.5. And 2.819 divided by 2.819 also gives me 1. Now if I look at this, my 1.5 is not close enough to round to a 2. So I need to find a factor to multiply it by to make it a whole number. I'm going to multiply each of these answers by 2 to give me whole numbers. So I have a total of three carbons, three hydrogens, and two oxygens. Next, I need to find my empirical formula, which will be C3H3O2. Now that I know my empirical formula, I'm going to calculate my molar mass. Based on my empirical formula, I have three carbons. 3 times the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12, gives me 36. I have 3 hydrogens. 3 times the atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1, gives me 3. 
and I have two oxygens. Two times the atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16, is 32. When I add these numbers together, I get a total of 71 grams. Now I take the mass I was originally given in the problem, 142 grams, and I divide it by the mass I calculated, 71 grams, which gives me a total of 2. That means I'm going to multiply all of the subscripts in my empirical formula by 2. So I get a molecular formula of C6H6O4.